right here then. So if you decide you want to share um, later via video, you'll have that option. So. Okay, so I'm gonna just go in the order that I was given the list. So Emily, Brianna, Tanya, Renee, and then Jessica. And each of you will have about 10 minutes, all right? Um, and if it looks like you're really running over time, I'll give you a little wave or a hold up of two fingers, right? Just because we wanna make sure we get through everybody and we don't want the last person to have to rush it through in two minutes. All right, so I was assured that I could make you guys co-host. However, that does not seem to be the case. Hmm. Can you, Emily, can you try and share your screen? It's says that host disable participant screen sharing. Okay, so it looks like I can share my screen. So a small okay. little snafu, but that's okay. We are flexible. Um, are you guys able to share the link? Do you have it in Google that you could drop it into the chat? Oh, yes. Or can you email yes. it to me? I just emailed it to you. You emailed it to me? Great. We'll do it that way. Okay. I can um, the link. All right. So I have Emily's. I'm going to share my screen. And then I'm going to put it in present mode. All right. So Emily, whenever you're ready, let me get my little timer so I can watch the time. Okay. And then, um, unfortunately, this way you'll have to tell me to advance the slide, but just let me know and I'll do that for you. Okay. All right. Hello everyone, my name is Emily Im and my research topic is technology-based social story interventions for individuals with autism spectrum disorder and I conducted a systematic review. Next slide please. So social story is a popular evidence-based practice developed by Carol Gray in um, 1990, and it is used for teaching people with ASD appropriate behaviors in specific social and academic contexts. And the problem is that there is limited research on the adaptations of the social story intervention strategy, particularly the use of technology-based modifications to address behavioral changes, behavioral challenges of individuals with ASD. Um, and I wanted to address this limitation because of the possible benefits of using technology-based formats, which may be more effective than traditional models of social stories, since many people with ASD have developed um, visual processing abilities and natural affinity for devices. Next slide, please. Oh, so the purpose the purpose of the systematic review was to identify existing studies on and evaluate the efficacy of technology-based social story in reducing challenging behaviors of students with ASD. And the review attempted to answer the question, is technology-based social story intervention effective in reducing behavior challenges of students with ASD? Next slide, please. So some supporting literature tells us that behavioral challenges are common for individuals with ASD. Specifically, three studies found high number of caregiver reports of maladaptive behaviors of individuals with ASD across age and ability levels, and that these behaviors um, greatly impact the lives of those with ASD and their families. And other literature has shown that social, social story interventions have shown efficacy in reducing challenging behaviors of students with ASD when used in traditional paper formats as well as increasing pro-social behaviors of students with ASD when used in technology-based formats. Um, next slide, please. 
So to um, select the studies for the review, I used the following um, inclusion criteria. The studies were peer reviewed, empirical, published between the years 2000 and 2020, included participants between the ages of three and 22 who had ASD, including Asperger's syndrome, and implemented technology-based social story intervention as independent variable and measure change in participants' challenging behaviors or replacement behaviors of disruptive ones as a dependent variable. Next slide, please. So the studies were identified using comprehens comprehensive searches of electronic databases. And here you can see the key terms that I used, like autism, social story, social narrative, technology, video, tablet, and iPad and elimination of studies that did not meet the inclusion criteria resulted with a final total of nine studies. Next slide, please. And the selected studies were coded with the following variables, um, study characteristics, including settings, experiment designs, and independent and dependent variable characteristics, participant characteristics, including the total number, age, gender, race, ethnicity, and disability related characteristics, and the conclusions, including data analysis method, results, social validity, maintenance, generalization, and the limitations. Next slide, please. And here is a condensed down version of the table of study characteristics mentioned in the previous slide. So the studies were conducted from 2009 to 2020, mostly in the US with three in the UK and one in Thailand. And all the studies used various study designs, social story adaptations, and participants with various characteristics. Next slide, please. So the data analysis showed that there were some common characteristics among the selected studies, including the effectiveness of the intervention and limitations. So all nine studies had positive outcomes with desired changes in participant behaviors, Majority of studies um, adhere to GRACE guidelines, and those that provided social validity data showed that most teachers and students reported positive reviews of the intervention strategy. And common limitations included the lack of mentioning the specific race and ethnicity of the participants, with only one out of nine studies that include the description, um, lack of older participants, older than 14 years old, lack of participants with level three A ASD, with many studies ex excluding those with limited language abilities and limited research on generalization of the intervention to different settings and maintenance of the behavioral change over time and lack of inclusion of social validity of participants, family members. Next slide, please. So the selected studies also revealed a natural progression of software and devices used for the creation and implementation of intervention that matched the advances in technology over time. The studies were categorized according to the software and devices that were used. The earliest study um, conducted in 2009 used a pre-made video in a DVD format, and it was followed by studies that used more interactive technology um, two of the studies used Microsoft PowerPoint software, and another study used a website developed by the authors to create digital social story. Um, the interactive qualities were developed further in a, with advances of personal portable devices with three studies that used Apple iPads to create and display social story videos, and the iPads allowed for a more user-friendly experience of recording and editing the videos as well as a tactile um, interaction with the stories themselves. And in the two most recent studies in 2020, they used the mobile applications that were designed, using, designed specifically for making social stories and they were also accessed through the Apple iPads. Next slide, please. So the overall positive outcomes and high social validity of technology-based social story interventions serve as evidence that the modified strategy may be a beneficial and effective tool to decrease behavioral challenges of students with ASD. And further research is required to address the elements of noted common gaps mentioned before, including the inclusion of participants with ASD in secondary and post-secondary levels, and those with level three ASD. Uh, mention of participants' ethnicity and race, review of maintenance and general generalization of 
behavioral changes and inclusion of social validity of participants, family members who may be greatly affected by um, their behavior changes. This review also highlights the importance of adapting existing intervention strategies using various digital tools to support their integration in today's classrooms, especially since technology's role is continuing to advance in educational settings. And limitations for the systematic review came from the specificity of the research question, which led to a relatively small number of articles selected. And the articles had broad um, variety of characteristics and the limited cohesiveness of the studies did not allow for further comparison of features that may have affected the results of the trials, such as study settings, types of um, intervention training, and how technology was used to create and deliver an intervention. Next slide, please. And that's the end of my presentation. I would like to thank my family, friends, and San Jose State professors for all their support during the past two years. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Good job, congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. We have about a minute and a half. Does anybody have any questions for Emily? I know you guys are really super familiar with each other's work. <laughs> Where was the picture taken? Um, in Hawaii, <laughs> that's my niece. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Um, like, like Hawaii water. Water. <laughs> <laughs> She's adorable. Thank you. You did a great job, Emily. Thank you so much. I enjoyed uh, hearing about just the technology um, version of the social story. So mm -hmm. that was a nice review. Okay, so Brianna, I'm gonna stop sharing for a second so I can get yours. You're next. So you also did social story. I know, I'm like, ours is so similar. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember And that. I love that Emily focused just on social stories that were technology-based. So it adds a nice um, different twist than yours. I know, a lot of the studies from my review also had technology-based social stories too, which was interesting, especially going back for so many years. But I can't believe we made it to the end, you guys. <laughs> Congratulations to you all. So again, my name is Brianna Brooks and my study was also a systematic review. And I focused on the effect of social stories on students with extensive support needs. Go ahead. Okay, so um, my whole purpose behind this project was a little more personal. Um, I jumped into a pretty behavioral intensive class um, and I was a second year teacher. And so everyone kept saying social stories were the way to go. And so I, I just wanted to do a little bit more research and here I am today. So when students present an intense or inappropriate behavior, they are most likely communicating a want or a need um, that they may be unable to communicate verbally. So we work diligently to understand the function of those behaviors and proactively teach um, students pro-social behaviors. Social stories help individuals with disabilities cope with expected or unexpected transitions and address a wide variety of behaviors and social scenarios by illustrating appropriate social responses. Um, social stories have been identified as an evidence-based practice for students with autism spectrum disorders. However, less is known about the use of this intervention with students um, with other disabilities, including intellectual disabilities. So the purpose of the study was to examine the existing literature on the use of social story interventions um, with individuals with an intellectual disability um, to describe other evidence-based practices utilized to accompany the traditional social story method, and then to assess the results of the intervention on improving or producing desirable behaviors in participants aged eight to 22. So my research question focused on um, what evidence does the literature provide about the use of social stories to improve outcomes for individuals with intellectual disabilities? All right, and jumping into the literature review. So when students with extensive 
support needs are presented with social stories. They demonstrate improvements in self-regulation skills, the use of coping strategies and functional behaviors. Um, strategies such as verbal prompting, apron storytelling strategies, and the use of video modeling further increased the appropriate social and functional skills. So those other evidence-based practices um, in support of the social story is what produced the most desirable behaviors. And then research shows that social stories are an effective strategy. However, a little research has been conducted on the use of the social stories with individuals with um, intellectual disabilities. Okay, so a database um, search yielded 35 records. After we did some more investigating, Dr. Simpson and I, <laughs> it was really difficult to find those articles. Six articles were deemed appropriate for this study. Um, the following search criteria was utilized. So we looked at empirical studies, targeting social story interventions, published in a peer reviewed journal between the years of 2005 and 2020. Um, the participants must receive special educational services under the qualification of intellectual disability in the age range of eight to 22. Um, social skills as an outcome of measure in the study, and then treatment must have been done in a school setting, setting or with um, school personnel or specialists. Here is a flow chart. So it, we, again, we started with 35 went down to 34, and then after um, a title and abstract review down to seven, that full text review led to five. And then looking at the references of those five, we added one. So the final total was six articles. Okay, and here are some of the results from the different studies. So utilizing video modeling combined with social story intervention allowed um, a, one of the participants to improve their ability to label emotions from a baseline of 55 to 95%. Um, so definite increase there. That same participant was able to explain emotions and appropriate actions with 100% accuracy compared to a baseline of 10%. So that video modeling as well as that social story really, really helped there. In the next study, um, another video recorded social story aided uh, the participant to reach 100% accuracy in performing the targeted social skill of using expressions appropriate to different situations um, spread throughout his day. And then two out of three in the next study reached mastery of adult outcomes and opportunities. So lots of growth here using those social stories aided with other evidence-based practices. And then we can go to the next one. Thank you. And then three out of three participants showed improvement in their academic engagement and a decrease in disruptive behavior after utilizing tablet-assisted social stories. That last study resulted in success as participant decreased inappropriate repetitive gestures from a baseline of 63 to 41%. So those inappropriate behaviors decreased. So that's what they were looking for there after the social story intervention was implemented. And um, summarizing that across all studies, 11 out of the 12 participants showed either a significant increase in appropriate social behaviors or a significant decrease in inappropriate social behaviors. So the various intervention characteristics such as video modeling, multimedia supported social stories like Emily talked about and reinforcers um, aided the social stories as individuals with intellectual disabilities may struggle with um, comprehension and so social competence in general. So those other evidence-based practices were really helping reach that comprehension level. The limitations, um, like I said, it was really, really difficult to find articles. Um, there was a total of 12 participants across all six studies. So the sample size was really, really low, making it pretty difficult to generalize results. Um, five out of the 12 participants participants qualified for special educational services under only intellectual disability, but they also had a secondary disability. So it was kind of difficult to only target the intellectual disability. Um, although it was a common diagnosis through all the participants. Um, future researchers may want to expand their study by increasing 
the age range and accepting a variety of qualifying disabilities. These criteria aim to study a very specific group of students with extensive support needs. So kind of expanding um, the qualifying disabilities I think will yield more participants for sure. The six articles yielded a total of 12 participants. And again, although 11 out of 12 participants showed significant improvement in appropriate social behaviors or a significant decrease in the inappropriate social behaviors, it is difficult to generalize these findings. So a greater sample size would again increase the validity of the study. Um, kind of like I talked about earlier, greater research is needed on evidence-based practices for students with intellectual disabilities. The research consistently represented evidence-based practices and interventions among students with ASD. However, a lack of research is found for students with intellectual disabilities. The six studies included in this review illustrated great correlation between the intervention strategies among students with ASD or ID, um, and a recommendation for future researchers is to conduct an intervention study with participants who have extensive support needs in order to add to the existing literature and to, and to compare the research to evidence-based practices among students with ASD. Yeah, one back. Is there one more? Oh, I think we skipped one. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so, no, it's okay. So social competence is really important to the development of children and adolescents. And we really looked at that in that last chapter. Um, assisting students with extensive support needs and developing greater social competence can be done through social skills and communication interventions, such as a social story. Um, findings from this study indicate that social story interventions work best when aided with additional supports and evidence-based practices such as video modeling and checks for comprehension to support that social competence of students with intellectual disabilities. Um, this review concludes that social story interventions are effective in teaching appropriate social skills to school-aged students who have a diagnosis of an intellectual disability. However, further research is welcomed and encouraged. And then here are my references. It's a lot of pictures, <laughs> so I just wanted to thank like my coworkers and my family. They've all been super supportive and all of the faculty at San Jose State and the other students who are going through it at the same time. But congratulations to you all and thank you guys. Thank you, Brianna. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for Brianna? Mm -hmm. Did you all notice any overlap in your studies? Yes, yeah. <laughs> some that you both included because I um, I noticed that Brianna, some of yours included um, the video piece of it, and I don't know if that was exactly the way Emily was looking at her. So I was like, oh, I wonder if they had some overlapping. Yeah, I saw like the tablet assisted um, social stories too that Emily talked about. And I was like, that was used, I think two, yeah, two of um, the 12 students had tablet assisted social stories. So I thought that was interesting too, especially dating back to 2005. <laughs> yeah. All right. So moving on from social stories now, we're gonna hear from Tanya. Whenever you're ready, Tanya. Hello, everyone. Congrats. We're almost there. Um, so the title of my research is Reading Comprehension Interventions for Emergent Bilinguals with Learning Disabilities, a Systematic Review. Um, so I chose this topic for two reasons. The first is because I was an emergent bilingual. And the second was because I'm currently an RSP teacher where 90% of the students are emergent bilinguals. And and have a diagnosed learning disability. There's a small group in particular that I have worked with for the past four years who greatly struggle with reading comprehension. And after seeing their challenges, I decided to focus on this area of research to help them and future students as well. So um, moving on to the problem. Oh, no, no, it's the previous slide. <laughs> 
So due to their lower levels of English proficiency upon enrolling in school, emergent bilinguals have different educational needs and are more likely to face challenges in developing literacy when compared to their English monolingual peers, particularly in the area of reading comprehension. As a result, the reading comprehension scores of emergent bilinguals are often lower when compared to students who come from English only backgrounds. And the scores are lower for those students who are, who are emergent bilinguals and also have a learning disability. So the purpose of the study was to examine what literature states as a whole regarding the reading comprehension interventions that have demonstrated positive effects on the comprehension skills of emergent bilinguals with learning disabilities. Also to identify um, strategies that can be used in the classroom setting to help these students, specifically in the area of reading comprehension. The question um, for my research is, what evidence does the literature provide about reading comprehension interventions for students who are emergent bilinguals with learning disabilities? Next slide. So for supporting literature, so O'Connor and others conducted an intervention study that provided explicit academic vocabulary instruction to a group of emergent bilinguals with learning disabilities. Their findings suggest that academic vocabulary instruction increases students' overall comprehension of a text. Barth and Elman used multi-component intervention strategies that included activating prior uh, background knowledge, scaffold, and graphic organizers. They found that a multi-component strategy was effective in improving the targeted inferential comprehension skills. Next slide. So the participants from all studies were 46, um, 46 students. They were from third through eighth grade and they were all from public schools. There were 25 boys and 25 girls, 78%, so that's 35 students had an IEP and diagnosed with a, learning, a specific learning disability. 9%, which is four students, um, had an IEP and were diagnosed with speech and language impairment, other health impairment or intellectual disability. The remaining participants received tier three reading interventions. The majority of the participants were Hispanic, but there were some participants who were Asian, Arabic, Puerto Rican, Ethi and Ethiopian as well. Next slide. So um, the inclusion criteria consisted of the following, using empirical studies that um, focused on school-based reading interventions with the focus on improving comprehension skills specifically. Uh, participants in the school years, uh, preferably between first and eighth grade, and the, the participants had to be students who were emergent bilinguals and also had a diagnosed learning disability. The pretest and post-test comprehension scores from each study were examined to determine the efficacy of the intervention strategies used. Okay. So from the it was about 2000 articles that Dr. Simpson and I had found. Only five articles fit the inclusion criteria. And um, from these five articles, the following intervention characteristics were reviewed. Academic vocabulary instruction. This um, teaches students unfamiliar um, and content vocabulary prior to reading a text. Semantic ambiguity instruction that pertains to language, language in English that has more than one meaning, such as multiple meaning words and riddles that are very hard for emergent bilinguals to decode. Um, Self-regulation strategies. Um, this teaches students to monitor their own thinking while they are reading. Reciprocal teaching. This is where students take turns being the teacher. They teach a, they teach a group of other um, students um, what they have learned and their thinking process for obtaining the correct answer. Cooperative learning, this is where students work in pairs and take turns teaching each other's comprehension skills previously learned. And fluency instruction, um, it's a focus on improving reading rate by having students um, read the text multiple times prior to answering the comprehension questions. From all of the articles reviewed, a total of 94 participants across studies demonstrated improvements in their comprehension skills after the intervention period. Some studies were more successful than others. Now we'll go into that. Next. So, the following were the three most successful studies. Um, studies. The first, the first um, study combined academic vocabulary instruction, self-regulation procedures, and cooperative learning. Students' scores improved from 0% at baseline to 75% after intervention. 
Semantic ambiguity, increased student baseline scores from an average of 20% to 90% after intervention. And self-regulation strategies, improve student baseline scores from an average of 30% to 85%. And all of these studies also, um, and all of the studies also um, track student uh, progress after the interventions, and they found that they actually retained the, the strategies that they had learned. Okay, next slide. So for conclusions, reading comprehension interventions do have positive effects on students who are emergent bilinguals and also have learning disabilities. The most effective interventions included multiple components to help students process and comprehend information. Interventions for emergent bilinguals with learning disabilities should always include vocabulary instruction to pre-teach unknown or challenging vocabulary from the text. This strategy is the most important since emergent bilinguals have challenges with reading and they are more likely to struggle with multiple uh, meaning words, academic vocabulary, and in using the context to determine the meaning of words. Um, huge limitation to the systematic review was that there are very few studies available indicating that there definitely needs to be more research on emergent bilinguals with learning disabilities. So oh, these are my references. And lastly, a great thank you to my professors for their guidance and expertise these past two years. Thank you so much. In particular, Dr. Simpson, you have been amazing. Thank you. Okay. And thank you. also to my family um, and my friends for their patience and support throughout this journey. Oh, look at you. So <laughs> that's a nice family. Well done, Tanya. As you guys are all going through, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that study. Oh yeah, I remember that study. So we spent so much time going through and, and looking at all of them. So it's uh, so nice to see how you all have um, summarized all of the results of that and um, completed out your conclusions and implications. So well done. Thank you. All right, does anybody have any questions for Tanya? Does it make you wanna do your own research? There are so few studies with, um, in Tanya's case, you know, emergent bilinguals with learning disabilities. It's like, this is a large population. Why don't we have more research on this? So. I think that was the hardest part going from a systematic or from an intervention to a systematic review. And I was like, gosh, this is why I wanted to do an intervention. Like there's not much here, you know. All right. So when we get back to in-person instruction and your schools actually allow other people to come in, we should all partner and carry out those interventions and go ahead and finish them up and add to the literature base. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, thank you, Tanya and Renee, you are next. So let me get yours pulled up. I'm very excited to see how yours turned out. Uh -oh. <laughs> All right, we are just like right on the time. Everyone is exactly 10 minutes. Whenever you're okay. ready. <laughs> All right, so I did a systematic review on using technology-based instruction in the classroom to increase academic engagement for students with ASD. Let's go to the next slide. So statement of the problem, um, there has been tons of research to prove, but specifically Steinbrenner and Watson found um, that students with ASD um, have a more difficult time becoming academically engaged. Um, and it's just a full circle of academic success is tied to motivation. But if you aren't engaged, you're not motivated. So um, yeah, next slide. 
So the purpose of this um, literature review um, was to examine the literature currently out there to determine the impacts of using technology um, based instruction as an instructional tool for school age children with ASD. Um, also to look at the effectiveness of these interventions and to also consider um, the effectiveness of using the intervention to increase academic engagement um, for, to, yeah, to, to increase academic engagement and also um, academic scores. So before we move on, I did want to clarify what academic engagement means because I did find that there were quite a few different words for the same definition, um, but I did find a good one looking at um, Al Rashadi's um, article. And it basically just means um, making sure students are um, connected to what they're learning so that they are able to be academically successful. So if they're engaged academically, then for the most part, they're going to be successful in the classroom. Um, it's about asking those kids that are asking those questions and wanting to learn more. Um, students with um, ASD aren't always or have not been found to be the most um, engaged in that way, in that academic engagement. So next slide. So for the looking at the research out there, searching a database, um, it started off with 1,806 results. Um, after going through the different inclusion criteria, um, starting with peer reviewed articles, um, then taking place between 2000 and uh, 2020, um, participants needed to be in school age, a school age with um, a diagnosed, be diagnosed with ASD. Um, also still looked for video games and or technology-based instruction. Um, and interchangeably, it would call it computer-based instruction um, was used in the classroom. Um, and then the intervention had to um, improve or intended to improve academic scores, social skills, um, and or increase engagement. So next one. So out of the four studies I found um, that fit with what I was kind of looking for, um, three of them were AB design, one was ABC design. Um, participants were all um, in elementary to junior high um, diagnosed with ASD or and or a specific learning disability. Um, and were significantly struggling with um, certain subjects in school or social skills and understanding what's appropriate or not appropriate. Um, the setting was in schools and the intervention, all of them were technology or um, computer-based interventions. Okay, next slide. So out of the four, I just kind of summarized them a little bit. Um, the first study done by Moore and um, Calvert used um, technology-based intervention to increase attention and academic scores. Um, they did this by comparing pre and post tests um, between um, traditional instruction, students that were getting traditional instruction and students that were getting technology-based instruction. Um, and they found that those students with ASD um, increased in both observed attention and scores on the post-test for the um, technology-based instruction. Um, the next one was Hopkins et al. used a, um, a computer-based intervention to develop social skills through games on the computer for students with both low-functioning ASD and high-functioning ASD. Um, against a control group with the same population of students. Um, and through the um, intervention that they had, um, 
groups made improvements to their social skills in both groups, but they found that the intervention done with the um, computer-based intervention um, had a lot more significant difference, it's significant progress um, than the control group. Next slide. Um, the next one, Key and M use technology-based instruction through the method of VR gaming to develop social skills in students with varying severity of ASD. Um, and this was, um, it was based off of a game called Second Life, which is like a, an immersive game where you are, you create your own person and you just like walk around in really social situations. Um, and they based the game that they created for this intervention, intervention um, on Second Life. And just to give them a more comfortable way to learn. And in those, in that um, intervention, they found that students greatly increased um, from where they were at in different things like um, greetings, um, conversation starters, and all that, everything that goes into kind of social um, interactions. Um, and then the last study is Wallen et al, um, who used a computer-based intervention called Teach Town. Um, this one is, was um, on the computer and kids would just be on the computer doing the, um, playing the game and they did pre and post tests again for um, both the intervention group and the control group. Control group got just regular traditional um, uh, services that they were already getting. Um, and in all participants, um, they found, all, well, sorry, in all participants who participated in the intervention for the appropriate amount of time, they did find that um, some teachers didn't give all students the correct amount of time on the computer. Uh, but if they were given that, they found um, significant increase in the post-test scores. Um, versus the control group who had an increase, but again, not as significant as that of the technology-based in intervention. And then, so the limitations, um, I had specifically <laughs> chosen a, um, a niche um, research question because I wanted to um, try it out with my kids in the classroom. Um, so I was actually looking for um, video games in the classroom and playing video games in the classroom to improve academic engagement. Um, but COVID kind of changed my plans a little bit. <laughs> so um, it changed to be a systematic review. And there was not a whole lot of information about video games being used in the classroom for um, students with ASD and then specifically for academic purposes. Um, so I had to change that around a little bit. And then the implications, um, I found a ton of research actually, as I was going through um, for students using technology-based interventions um, who were diagnosed with emotional disturbance. Um, and I thought that would actually be really interesting to look at and um, especially with the video game aspect in it. Um, also, I would, again, go, go with video games, um, just like narrowing that focus and then just finding more research on academics. Ooh, I think I made good time. Okay. And then the last slide is just um, thanking my parents who always supported my education, my husband who doesn't know what I'm doing at all um, in school, but has always been super supportive. Um, and then my son, Caden, who thankfully was born in between, uh, it was a hybrid week. So I was like, thank you. I can still do what I need to do. <laughs> um, and then of course, Dr. Simpson, I would not be here without 
your support, feedback, advice, everything. You guys are too kind. You guys did all the hard work. You are so supportive though. I'm so proud of all that you have done. I probably would have given up. (laughs) Same here. So glad you didn't. I'm so proud of you. All of you. Thank you. You had you had the most significant change in the middle of your MA program than any other group, right? People that were doing surveys could continue to do their surveys, right? And you guys had to really do a big about face. Um, and that would throw anybody for a loop. And I'm really proud of you for sticking with it and not abandoning um, the goal that you had set for yourself. You should be proud of yourself too. Thank you. All right, Jessica, did you email or did you say you dropped it in the chat? Um, There's a link, I dropped it in the chat. And I may have child stimming, child running naked. totally okay, right? A stimming child and then a typical neurotypical child screaming either end of the house. And they're all coworkers. Yeah. Exactly. I I was lucky mine was taking a nap or mine is taking a nap. (laughs) All right. I'm very excited to hear yours, Jessica. So whenever you're ready. Okay. Thank you. My name is Jessica Gutierrez Reese. Um, I conducted my a systematic review, and the focus was perceptions of typical peers in play-based interventions with students with autism. So the purpose of my systematic review um, is to examine the literature related to perceptions of typical developed peers participating in an intervention with peers with ASD. And my proposed research question is, what evidence does the literature provide about the perceptions of typical peers in play-based interventions with students with ASD or autism? Um, So the literature um, that I found, I found, I identified three specific areas of importance related to children with autism and their experiences within an integrated school environment. The literature that I found supports the idea of autism awareness and acceptance to enrich the school experiences of all stakeholders. So that would be the children with autism, the typical developed peers, their teachers, um, and the community. The literature also supported the practice of school-based peer-mediated interventions over clinic-based for a better quality of social skills development and peer engagement. In addition, um, the literature supported integrated playgroup interventions in school-based settings to support students with ASD to engage in purposeful play experiences with their typical developed peers. So this would help support their, um, their engagement with their peers and their natural interactions. So my methods, uh, the systematic review, I initially had over a thousand uh, articles when I put in my search terms with which are students with autism, integrated play interventions, and peer perceptions. But I use that secondary search line. And so I was able to um, narrow it down to 134 results, which really helped (laughs) helped me out. Um, In addition to narrow my results, I looked for um, current research between 2005 and 2020, peer reviewed articles, And then I also used um, uh, inclusion criteria. Um, So with that inclusion criteria, I reviewed uh, titles and abstracts and then conducted a full text review. So that narrowed my search down to five articles. Um, After uh, that, I conducted a reliability check with a secondary researcher, Dr. Simpson. And she actually, she mixed one and then she, she uh, was able to provide me, she helped me find another article. So that um, actually brought me, it went from six back down to my, my five articles. And next slide. So my inclusion criteria for, um, for my uh, systematic review, um, the first was an intervention. 
So the interventions uh, had to be either peer mediated and or an integrated play intervention and it had to be an empirical study. The participants age range. So I wanted participants between um, that were elementary age students. So between four and 12 years of age and they were students with or without, um, with and without an autism diagnosis, because I wanted that peer engagement, peer intervention. Um, the third was a skills address. So each of the articles had to measure some form of peer interaction. And the fourth was setting. It had to be in a school setting and specifically elementary school setting. So results from my study. So. Um, Three of the studies were single subject AB design, one was a reversal AB AB design, and one was a multiple baseline design. And the participant characteristics, so students were between four and 12 years of age. I had a total of 123 participants. 35 of those students were students with autism and 88 students were typical developed peers. The setting for um, the interventions were an elementary school setting, and the interventions were conducted during uh, whole class time, recess, lunch time, or during um, after school, during like an after school program. And they were either in the classroom or on the school playground or in playrooms at the school. Dependent variables measured were typical peer perceptions and typical peer and ASD initiations of engagement. Intervention characteristics for my systematic review, studies were conducted uh, during a span of between five to 24 weeks. Um, they targeted some form of social skill development or altering peer perceptions and engagement. And they involved peer mediated interventions or integrated play interventions. So some uh, strategies that were used were pivotal response training, whole group autism awareness sessions, small group peer networks like Circle of Friends, which is a peer network that um, a lot of people know about, peer tutoring strategies, peer training interventions, and shared reading interventions. You might recognize the name right there. <laughs> So outcomes from the study, typically developed peers provided positive feedback in some form in all five research articles. Uh, participants expressed an increase of ASD knowledge and acceptance, a greater understanding of diversity and increased attitudes of empathy and caring. And typically developed peers expressed enjoyment of the experience, developed friendships, confidence building, and one participant stated, I felt quite proud of myself because I felt like I did something good. So um, some of the limitations from my study were that there weren't many, so there was only one of my articles that was specific that the intervention was because they wanted to alter peer perceptions. So that was Jones. His was, that intervention was specifically to um, change the perceptions or see alter the perceptions of the typical developed peers. And so that was one of the biggest limitations that I had for this study is because there were a lot of interventions that were out there, studies that were out there specifically um, either for peer mediated interventions, um, integrated play-based interventions, but they didn't they had some form of peer perceptions that were measured, but it wasn't specifically about the peer perceptions. So um, that's where I, I, I hit some uh, roadblocks. But um, final analysis of the studies, of all the studies showed that a need for additional research of peer mediated interventions and their effects on perceptions of students with ASD. All studies shared a common theme of positive perspectives during and after the interventions. And there was a, um, a prevalent outcome of the study was that typical developed peers appeared to benefit significantly from their experiences participating in the studies. So they gained a lot from, from um, their experiences engaging with the students, participating in the whole class autism awareness. Um, and another um, outcome from the study was that um, 
uh, students who weren't participating in their intervention, they weren't a part of the engagement or training sessions, they were just watching their peers engage with the students with autism, they were, were um, enticed to go and play and engage with them and interact. So that was another interesting one. So further analysis is needed on the whole effects of inclusive practices in schools to foster personal growth in students with autism and their typically developed peers. And that is my presentation. So thank you to my kids who had a lot of patience. Uh, Dr. Simpson, you're on there too. Um, uh, and to my mom, who she's not here. And oh, I wasn't going to cry, but oh. yeah, that's my mom. And she's always been such a big supporter. Big, a big, your number one fan, of course, right? Yes, yes. Absolutely. I love these pictures. I'm so glad you all put your pictures on the end. Yeah, that's really nice. That one in the middle is uh, we were at the Autism Speaks walk. Oh, yeah, I can see that. That's awesome. Great job, Jessica. Um, Thank you. I really enjoyed hearing about that very important topic, right? We have to understand how um, inclusion is impacting our so-called neurotypical students, right? Um, so that we can get better and better at it and really advocate um, that it's not just for students with disabilities. There are huge benefits for all of our students and there's so many reasons why we need to be doing it. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yes, thank you. All right. You guys did an amazing job. Like I said, I'm so very proud of you. And I think we are like exactly on time. My computer says 510. And Dr. Love has been texting me. We're not going to finish. We're not going to finish. <laughs> we did it. We were right on time. <laughs> so thank you all. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, you're going to go to the rest of the colloquium. See the other parts of it.